Let me put up that it's a best of three, and we'll get this shit rolling. I will even give you the Protoss player, uh, because I love you, Cher. I thank you, sir. All right, man. Our player from Root in the bottom left-hand corner of the map, the blue Zerg, it is Nero. Nidus is the fucking best? That's what you guys get. You want Nero? I'll give you Nero. And spawning in the bottom right, currently teamless, a red Protoss player, it is Hostem. Juggernaut44 says, the winner of this match qualifies. All right, guys. So that fucking, is correct, This yes. is for all the marbles is what you're trying to tell. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, damn, dude, I am hyped. Did you think a couple months ago when we started this as a joke, we were going to be casting Neural versus Harstam with the WCS fucking logo on the Nidus, dude? Like, damn, man. Pretty hype. But it's so not about us. It's happened, about them. This is the winner's match of Group B. Okay. So, Hostum 2 0 Daedra and Nero 2 1 Mystic. So, the loser of this match will go on to fight the winner of Daedra versus Mystic, which will be the uh, loser's match of this round. So, we can cast that too, is what you're saying. Very possible. So, we're yes. following this winner, is what so you're trying to tell the, me. We are, well, the winner of. Fucking we're going to follow the loser of this match. No, we called it already. Qualify. Oh, okay, okay. The loser, the loser. Yeah, sorry. Loser I, I forget we're in a double elim. Trip. That's my bad, guys. Uh, but let's talk okay. about the game real quick, really quick. Uh, Harstam is getting his second gas. He has his natural up and rolling. Uh, pretty standard from him, except for that second gas. And then we have three bases coming down from Nero as well. Uh, so, yeah, nothing too crazy here. And we're off to a bit of a standard game. Or, or, you know, at least as standard as it gets for the games we've had today. So We actually do have a very fast Jesus. third hatch from Nero, which is... Uh... Which is honestly the hatch timing that I'm used to seeing in pro games. So like, not like cats taking like a, a third base at like four and a half minutes or something. Oh. He just like very quickly dropped that third. So basically, it was hat very fast hatch gas pool hatch. Dank memes. He didn't even good luck have fun him, dude. I guess in a tournament setting, there's not even time for that. Like the wasted APM from typing that shit could lose you the game, dude. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not trying to create any drama, by the way, either, guys. Like, I think he probably just yeah. forgot to good luck, have fun, and I'm just trolling while we're off to a bit of a lull here. Uh, in the beginning of the game, I don't think there's going to be too much damage here going on in the beginning just because, you know, we're already on three bases, two bases. So it's going to be a bit of a posturing here in the beginning. He is going to come across here with a couple adepts, try to figure out what the hell's going on. You know, more of a scout than anything else. Oh, it's yeah. only one. It was shaded, lol. Yeah, this is um, just the first adept, which is going to be looking for drone count on the natural base as well as a third base timing. Uko He's says, can I post links here or will my butthole get destroyed if I do? <laughs> what? It'll probably get destroyed either way, Kappa Pride, but you should probably, I don't know, like, use your judgment, man. If they're not all trolly and, like, crazy, post a link. You, you, like, I don't know. You know what you can post and not, dude. I'll leave it up to you. Just don't be trolly. Uh, but yeah, what do you think about this, man? I saw the Stargate down already, so we have an Oracle coming out of that. You should be able to get over there. Um, no spores up or anything in any of the mineral lines, so that could be, that could be juicy. It definitely could get some damage done. And we, obviously, Nero has not scouted the Stargate as yet. He should be able to scout the gateways coming up at the front. And it's actually going to look like a Glaive's opening, but the Twilight's only just starting. So this Uka. looks like it's going to be the Korean thing we're seeing right now. This the like double thing. Oracle into Glaive's Adept. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, you can post shit like that all day. Also, if you guys do um, exclamation point bracket, I think we have the technology to, to, to give you guys that too. Uh, if it doesn't work, I'm sorry. Blame Sheer. If it doesn't work. Um, so Nero's going to try to poke in here with a couple of links. Because of this wall, they're not going to be able to find any damage. They actually get shoot away rather convincingly. And on the other side of the map, we have the Oracle coming out as well. Uh, sorry, I'm getting a little rap gaudy early on in this morning. But I'm so fucking hyped right now, dude. Like, Jesus. Oracle actually picks up a decent number of kills with three already. Spore does finish, so the Oracle won't be able to get as much damage as it would like to. It ignored the Queen focusing down drones. So, a little bit of damage done so far, not as much as necessarily Hearthstone would like to have. Yeah. But if you look at the spore placement in the main, it's a little bit off-center, so we could get onto that gas geyser without losing any workers, without losing any damage on that Oracle. Uh, 2C2BT says, I don't get the hype around uh, about Neuron, but I might as well watch it. I don't know, I think he's a good player, and he tries to improve the community, so, like, I, I don't know, it sounds lame, but I have mad respect for people that actually try to help the community that largely just trolls the shit out of him. Like, you know what I mean? I have mad respect for these guys, so I think it's cool that he tries to do stuff like that, release builds and stuff, so I got nothing to say about the guy, except for good things. I think he's pretty cool, so. Uh, but we have um, Resonating Glaives coming out, as well as a lot of adepts. I wouldn't say, like, a game-ending amount or anything, but that's a pretty significant amount he should be able to get over there and shade around it and get a little bit of damage done yeah this is like i said it's going to be the oracle pressure with the adepts he's going to shade back and try to chase these links down he wants to see if he can get a little bit of 
numbers shaved off of them. He's gonna complete the shade, but just trying to posture a little bit. He's gonna bring the oracles back to make sure he's not being all in. Is the scout that he had didn't really show any tech in the main base. The virtual one was in the natural. Yeah, that's really the only tech that's down so far. Lair is only just finishing. Is Nero a really have... funny looking dude with long hair and a funny webcam angle? Dang, means my friend. But let's get into this engagement. Well, the Lynx are going to surround the that. Guy. Yeah, that would be the guy. Uh, so the Lynx are going to try to surround the Adept. They get cleaned up pretty convincingly. Uh, the Queens are left to deal with the Oracles, and he takes the shade into the natural. Should be able to find a lot of drones here, or, or at least get this Queen. Um, the Roaches are going to come back here and try to deal with this. Uh, but I think this is a pretty good attack here from them. By the time they get up there, they'll be able to shade out. So. I didn't actually, actually see that many drones base. go down, though. Yeah. So they're continuing to get more drone kills. Total of 18 kills so far. Yeah. And uh, just very effective pressure from Arsenal, who is behind <laughs> this, getting into a level. <laughs> <This motherfucker says, laughs> I think he looks like a Viking put in the wrong era or something. <laughs> oh, my God. Dankest you of guys, memes, my you friend. Guys are Thank you guys for yeah. making this day amazing. Um, But what's not amazing is the fact that all those links were cocked behind the queen. They weren't able to come up there. Okay, there we go. He's able to deal with it. So let's take a look at this game. It's now Harstam has 65 workers to Nero's 45. That's pretty telling in and of itself, as well as the supply lead. So he has a huge worker lead. He has a huge supply lead. Uh, it's starting to look pretty good for him there. I think Nero needs to get over here and get a lot of economic damage done if he can. So. Yeah, try to put some damage down, but he doesn't want to fight into force fields and overcharge. If they force field behind the lings, they won't be able to even run away from the overcharge. Yeah. So just because he can't really afford to replace the lings right now, not even if the live cost. He's got to be make his lost drones yeah. to stay in this game economically. No, I like his stream, dude. I think it's pretty cool. Man. I don't know why people are giving him hate. I think people are just trolling him, but I think his stream is pretty hype, dude. Um, <laughs> all right, so... He's an awesome guy. And even if yeah. he didn't play StarCraft, I'd say he's just an awesome guy. He never has <laughs> yeah. anything bad to say about anybody. Yeah. And I, I love his attitude as far as approaching the game as well as just life in general. Yeah, and definitely. I, I think that's re one reason people like him a lot is just like his, his, his attitude, his outlook. Yeah, he's extremely he likable as a person. His, he has such a... He teaches having a good mindset when you play this game. And it's so easy to get tilted or to have a bad mindset when you're playing this game. And he just encourages people to be as positive as possible. Just take your losses in stride as an, and as something to learn from. Yeah, definitely. I've even seen him thank his opponents when he's like getting wrecked. He'll be like, thank you for teaching me this lesson. I'm like, damn, dude. I can he's normally like, yeah, only like, muster literally. up like, screw you, I hate you. But this guy's out here giving like, compliments. Exactly. It's like, it's like, like a, every loss is an opportunity to learn. Yeah. And that's literally where it is, regardless of your level of play. If you lose to something as a GM, or if you lose to something as a diamond player, even if it's just like the same build, it's just the difference in the execution, yep. then you're going to be able to learn how to hold the thing. Just by the loss, you're going to be like, I've never seen this before. Well, Man. I'm not going to die to it again. Hearthstone's colossal. Yeah, Hearthstone's comp is starting to get pretty ridiculous. With the amount of Archons joining the fight as well, this is getting pretty scary here. Uh, so he's got a 141 to 115 supply lead, as well as a 10 worker lead. So he's, he's looking pretty strong in here. And I think this, damage, or this attack is going to do pretty significant damage. Um, it really is. Hydra's only just popping, but you don't want just Hydra's versus Charge Lot Archon. Um, the angle from the engage is just is, is nice, though. You're forced down, but there's just not enough army on the ground right now for Nero. Yeah. Arstrom is going to be able to run away with this first game in a very convincing engagement outside the third base location. Yep, there were a little bit of units here, but they were kind of caught on the other side of this horse and kind of just got killed streaming in, you know, two or three at a time. And uh, as we were just saying there, the man, the myth, the legend actually says, well played. GG's out, and Harstam will take game number one, uh, which is some pretty standard macro play. Nothing really to say about that, but that's pretty nice, man. Very impressive early harass. He's able yeah. to use the oracles to prevent the adepts from going down to the links around. And then after the links went down, just the reinforcing roaches were the only answer to the adepts. Yep. And as you know, roaches aren't that mobile until they have their uh, reconstitution. Yep. Move faster. All right, so let's just find out what map number two is. We'll all find out together because we are not controlling the uh, lobby. So give us just a second, guys. That was a pretty cool game number one, though, man. We'll have to see if he switches things up here and tries to get a little bit more aggressive here uh, in game number two rather than, you know, dropping back and getting three bases early on. So Yeah, it was a very macro approach to the situation, but I think he didn't anticipate the Stargate. I don't, if he had scouted the Stargate as well as when the Twilight went down, I think he'd have been fine. He built the Roach Warren at a timing that would have countered a Glaive's opening, but it, he just wasn't quite ready for the Stargate accompanying, accompanying that. 
Yeah. Uh, so I just gave everyone 200 doubloons and turned on betting. So you guys can bet uh, for who's going to win this next game. We're not talking about the series, only the game. So just to kind of make it a little bit more interactive uh, for you guys, you just follow that URL and then put on betting or whatever you guys want to do. Uh, everyone got 200 points just to kind of play with. Uh, have fun. All right, let's um, do this. Next map is going to be Abyssal Reef. The first time we've seen Sheila today, dude. Rush L Chiro SC2, you, did, you missed his first game. This is going to be game two in a series versus Hearthstone. And the winner of this qualifies. The uh, loser will go on to play the winner of the series, which is Daedra versus Nistic. Yeah. So Nero still has a chance, to, even if he loses to Hearthstone, he still has a decent chance to qualify. Wait, sorry, repeat this. Uh, Nistic versus Daedra is going to be waiting Nistic for him on the other Daedra. side of this? The yes, winner sir, this of that? is the winner's match. Gotcha, the loser's gotcha. match is the, should be playing out right now, and it's Daedra versus Nistic, and then the loser of this series will play versus the winner of that one. Gotcha. And the winner of that series will qualify. All right, well, let's get introductions underway, my friend. Our player from Root in the top left-hand corner of the map, currently down one point in this best of three. Uh, the loser, it is Nero. Spawning in the bottom right, currently teamless, it is a red Protoss on match point. He is Hostum. And in the top kind of left, the mascot of the Nidus, it is Sheila. Sheila! Getting our shark watch on. Yeah, we got to get our shark watch on really early into the game. Because I kind of get carried on in the mid game. And then, uh, like, there'll be huge engagements going on. People will be GGing out, and I'll just be over here kind of watching the shark. That's kind of what we do on this map, guys. So I apologize for that. Uh, welcome to the Nidus. That's how we roll on Abyssal Reef. Uh, but either way, let's see what's up um, going on in this game. So far, nothing too crazy. It looks pretty standard from the Protoss side of things. Uh, Zerg side as well. So nothing too cheesy, crazy. Uh, pretty standard so far. So. All right. Place your bets, by the way, guys. Let us know who you think is going to win. Uh, Harsum coming down and taking his natural, so yeah, it, it will be pretty standard. I was wondering because of the uh, where this probe was going, if he was going to try to proxy something out or something. Uh, but I think he's just trying to catch that really early third again. So yeah, he definitely wants to be at least aware of when it goes down. We already did see Nero take a pre-two minute third. Yeah, and the probe is in position to at least delay that if Nero attempts to do it again. Uh, people are trying to figure out how to bet. If you scroll up, there's a URL from Revlobot. You have to click on that, or you can do bet uh a or b right like exclamation point bet a or b i believe a will be nero and b will be harston but the best way is to just follow that link uh scroll up a little bit either way though we have a stalker coming out and still no third yet so he's definitely switching it up that's what we kind of asked in in the intermediate or what er, er, intermission uh, whether or not he was going to go for that really early third base or just try to be a little more aggressive. And I think this is a really good call. Uh, the only difficult thing, though, is because of Abyssal Reef is it's really hard to get past this choke right here. So I don't know, man. Th this is going to be pretty crazy. Interesting wall situation for Hostum. He's going to have the ability to finish off the wall, but it's going to be a while before he does. And he's building his Twilight in the main base. We have no Stargate on the way just yet. So it is going to be Twilight Tech first. It may actually be the Archon drop. Yeah. Yeah, so well, I mean, that's extremely popular, especially it. on this map, too. So I, I wouldn't uh, doubt that at all. We'll have to see if that's what it's going to be, though. And we do have a Robo on the way. This is this definitely is starting to look like Archon drop. Oh, yeah. I know you, you're you a big fan of that yourself, aren't you? It's, my, it's the only build that I can get consistent damage done. I find it to be... Um, the most reliable yeah as far as that goes because as long as the warp prism and the icons stay alive you're able to pressure across the map and you're never let and the zerg is never allowed to move out with their full army okay okay uh but this is kind of what i was talking about it's really hard to get in here and do a lot of heavy aggression in the beginning of the game especially on this map because of this wall situation it's going to be extremely hard for him to poke into there uh, i think he kind of knew that which is why he dropped back got his third uh the dt shrine is down as well so i i mean sure called it that's what we're going to get out of here uh but yeah this is definitely the map to do it huh sheila I feel like Archon Drops are always something to incorporate, DT Archon Drops, always good to incorporate into any build you use, yeah. build set you use in a tournament, because it's very uh, a very flexible build, I mean you are playing very greedily in the very early game, he's delayed his Mothership Core, it's only just finishing now, he is 
only operating on one gateway of production until warp gate is finished, basically. And yeah. the first thing he's going to be warping into those DTs. Yep. So if you if you drop in the, like a, a early link drop, you can do a very good job countering this build, which is why a lot of pro players are using the uh, Stargate openers initially, because a lot of times. When Holy the, uh, shit! Drops do happen. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, my friend. But uh, someone in chat just said game time beat you thermal two to one and advanced into the round wow. of thirty two. I can't confirm that, but if that is true, I would definitely label that as an upset, right? So I, I think that's that worth just. Upset. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like that's kind the of a big deal. Is the um, best Terran in Europe right yeah, now. Yeah, but that's and what I'm game saying. Time, game time is no slouch, but he doesn't have that kind of status on NA. I mean, he's one of our better players, but that's still impressive. I tried to call it earlier on. Everyone was like, oh, that's going to be M canning Mew Thermal. Easy, easy, easy. I'm like, damn, you guys are willing to just well, count to out game fair, time kinda, like that? Like, to be God. fair, I kind of thought that was going to be the situation because, like, M canning has a winning record versus him, and it's Mew Thermal. And to see Mew Thermal play versus Snoot, it is absolutely nuts. Meanwhile, DTs that's neither here or there. We have three DTs hacking on the third base right now. Everyone, no lair. Everyone so said... No oh, sorry to cut you off. Everyone said that it was true, by the way. I wasn't trying to, like, call dude out and be like, Oh, no, it's false. Yeah. I just meant it was unconfirmed. That's all. Uh, there, You know, yeah, Twitch and trolls are... go hand in hand. You can't blame me there, so... Uh, these these DTs, DTs may actually end this game. Jesus. Uh, Jesus. The only protection is the static that he's able to produce, and it's done now. The yeah. third base is going to go down. DT is now moving toward the natural, trying to see if there's any damage to be done there. There actually is already a score established, but there's not really an army to fight this. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. There's not really any cushion or anything. He's literally going to aim his way to victory. Just off of the straight up DTs is all you need, man. More joining the fight as well. I think we're up to eight or nine here in total, and that's going to be a pretty significant force in terms of DPS. Uh, not much from Nero can really handle this. As you see, 17 drones have gone down in total. As soon as that spore falls, that's going to be the end. There's also an Archon coming in here too, a War Prism. I mean, that's kind of the beginning of the end here uh, for our Zerg player. But damn, man, shit happens. It kind of sucks that it came to this, you know what I mean? But such as StarCraft, that's just kind of how it goes. So, Jesus, man. <laughs> Ninjas on a plane. Ninjas on a plane, guys. GG, well played. Harstom will advance. Oh, wait, 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 sorry.